If you've ever wondered how January earned its name, you should consider listening to the story of Janus, the Roman deity of beginnings and changes. The ancient Romans had a particular deity who, in a sense, held the key to the figurative doorways or gates between what has been and what will be, the liminal realm of moving from one era into another. Now, while this god can be the most significant of all in the Roman mythology, he just is among the ones lesser known. So what is the myth around him? Hello, and welcome back to our channel, where today we'll dive into the story of the Roman god Janus. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future uploads. Now, let's begin. So Janus was the deity of entrances, exits, and transitions in Roman mythology. With regard to dichotomies like life and death, beginning and end, youth and adulthood, rural and urban, war and peace, and barbarism and civilization, Janus stood for the liminal space between both real and abstract dualities. He was seen as the beginning of human existence, changes between phases of life and transitions between historical eras. The ancient Romans had the belief that Janus oversaw important life events, including marriages, births, and funerals. He was in charge of things like planting, harvests, seasonal changes, and the start of a new year. The Roman writings also hold that Janus was present at the creation of the universe. He controlled the entrance to heaven and other gods and guarded their gates. Because of this, he was frequently summoned first in ancient Roman religious rituals, and he received offerings before any other god or goddess at public sacrifices. In fact, there is proof that Janus was revered far before many other Roman gods, even during the reign of Romulus, the founder and first ruler of Rome. He has appeared in mythology since the start of Roman civilization. Janus triggered the eruption of a volcanic hotspot when Romulus, the creator of Rome, abducted the Sabine women. As a result, the army of Tatius, a Sabine ruler of Curis, was buried alive in the scalding hot volcanic springs ash and water combination, which killed some of the warriors and burnt or disfigured many more. Later, though, the Romans and Sabines came to an agreement to build a civilization together. To commemorate this, during times of conflict, the doors of a roofless building known as the Janus were left open after a symbolic troop of soldiers had passed through it. When peace was achieved, the doors were ceremoniously shut. Other tales claim that Janus once intervened to save Saturn from being banished from heaven by Jupiter. He looked after him for a while with extreme hospitality. He was gratefully given the ability to see both the past and the future by Saturn. Others recount this transformation of the nymph Carna into Cardea, the Roman goddess of Hinges. According to one version, he was welcomed by the Camis in Latium, where they shared a realm, and he was from Thessaly. The river deity Tiburnius was one of the many children from their marriage, after whom the river Tiber was named. The Golden Age was introduced to the people by Janus, who ruled in Latium's first monarch. The peculiar aspect of the deity is his well-known image. He is shown as having two faces, one facing the past and the other facing the future, symbolizing the fact that he is the deity of transitions and dualities. In his right hand, he carries a key, signifying his defense of openings between spatial barriers, such as doors, gates, and thresholds. The key symbol in ancient Rome also denotes a traveler's quest for safety or a peaceful exchange of commodities. Famously, Janus is linked to the change from peace to conflict. It is stated that Numa, the fabled second king of Rome, established a temple to Janus Geminus, twofold, in the Roman Forum, adjacent to the Senate House since he was known for his religious zeal. It was situated where Janus had created a spring of hot, boiling water to prevent the Sabines' attempt to conquer Rome. The shrine had a walled enclosure with two arched gates at either end that served as entrances, with one head directed towards each gate. A bronze figure of Janus stood in the center. Although the first emperor, Augustus, bragged that he closed the temple three times, it is reported that the gates of Janus remained closed for 43 years under Numa. However, they seldom did so after that. Later, Nero issued coins depicting the gates of Janus being tightly closed to commemorate the signing of his peace treaty with Parthia. Romans believe Numa was responsible for adding January to the calendar. 
the building of twelve altars in Janus's temple in the Forum Holatorium, one of each month of the year, solidified the connection between Janus and the calendar. Thus Marshall, the poet, referred to Janus as the parent, the progenitor of the years. Some more things Janus oversaw was the founding of financial institutions as well as the shift from savagery to civilization. The invention of coinage was a significant component of this. According to Roman tradition, Janus was the first human or deity to make coins. As a result, his double-faced head was depicted on several Roman coins. These coins are still on display in museums today, and jewelry frequently has images of Janus coins. Now, here's an interesting thing. The majority of Roman deities that had a Greek mythological counterpart and a figure akin to Janus in the Greek myths was Orthus. It was a two-faced hound with one face grazing to the present and the other to the future, like Janus. He wasn't as important in ancient Greece as Janus was in ancient Rome, though. For the present, even if the costumes and worship of the Roman deity Janus date back a long time, they still exist today. Following the directive to scribe the words of God on the gates and doorposts of your house, many Jewish households, for example, put a mezuzah on the doorway. Similar to how Muslims have unique greetings and customs for entering a mosque, Christians frequently place a cross above their front door. If you don't practice in your religion, you may place a meaningful picture, image, or symbol next to your front entrance as a way to welcome guests. Due to Janus Geminus' early links to water and bridges, five shrines were constructed in Rome in his honor. All of these shrines were situated close to river or watercourse crossings. Near the Argoletum entrance of the Forum stood the most significant of these sanctuaries. The bronze doors on the east and west sides of this specific shrine were kept closed during peacetime and open during wartime, in accordance with tradition. The doors were hardly ever shut, though since the Romans constantly seemed to be engaged in conflict somewhere, the army's departure from the city in accordance with ritual in order to be protected by Janus was another crucial aspect of the army's preparation for battle. Failure to do so could lead to failure. It was thought that the god lived in a temple on the Janiculum Hill, but archaeologists have never discovered his temple. It had two doors, one of which closed inside and the other outward, and was made of square bronze. This was seen as the metaphorical starting point for both the Roman Empire and the Roman Republic. A Christian church soon emerged in the Janiculum. The portals of Janus were reopened during the Gothic Wars, about 6th century AD, when it appears that small groups of pagan worshippers continued to do so. Many medieval academics held the opinion that witches and magicians worship Janus in their rituals. The consuls, who served as the Republic's leading magistrates, began taking office on January 1st in 153 BC, which the Romans called the Calends. The new consuls prayed to Janus, and priests offered him a typical barley cake known as the Eannual and spelt, combined with salt. Romans gave their friends presents for the new year that included money, a symbol of hope for riches, as well as dates, figs, and honey in the hopes that the year would be delightful. So, on January 1st, if you feel torn between two worlds, step outdoors and celebrate the way the Romans did. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future uploads. Also, let us know your thoughts on this one down in the comments below. We'll see you next time with another amazing mythical story. Until then, goodbye.